let's break down all of the religious trauma themes that we see in the film Women Talking. I'm Dr. Quincy Gideon. I'm a clinical psychologist and I specialize in religious trauma and cult abuse recovery. I'm here to point out all of the culty and toxic dynamics that can happen in groups so that you can keep yourself safe. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll give you two ways you can spot religious trauma within a group setting. If this resonates with you, give us two thumbs up so that other people can find us and we're so glad that you're here. So let's chat about the film Women Talking. The premise of the film, and there will be spoilers here, so move along if that's not your thing. The premise of the film is a group of women that have discovered what has been happening to them over the past several decades within a religious offshoot, um, a religious group that lives really off the grid, separate from most of society. And these women have discovered, uh, two young girls discover, that they have all been tranquilized using cow tranquilizer and physically assaulted in their beds at night. So most of these women had spent years waking up with evidence that something untoward had happened, but they couldn't quite figure out what was going on because they were tranquilized. And they would be forced to um, keep pregnancies, uh, give birth to these babies, sometimes give up these babies uh, back to their abusers' families. And most of the time this was couched in unholy ghosts or Satan physically assaulting them for some spiritual outcome. Yikes. There are lots of ways that religious trauma shows up in this film, but here's three of the things that I noticed right from the start. The first is, is that the women sort of get together and they vote on whether they want to stay and make a change or whether they want to leave or whether they want to do nothing. They literally, for the first time within their uh, organization, the women are allowed to vote. They do not know how to read. They do not know how uh, to vote. They've never been allowed to do so. But in this context, all of the men go off to the nearby city um, in order to get the man, the assailant, out of jail. And this leaves all of the women around to talk for 48 hours about what they are going to do. And they cast their first vote to decide what they want to do. I just wanna point out that this is actually the process of deconstructing. So in the evangelical Christian world, which is where this word kind of sprung up, we talk about deconstruction. Deconstruction is simply the process of pulling apart all of those faith traditions, all of the tenets of your faith, and really looking at them and deciding what do I wanna keep and what might I need to separate from because it is not serving me, it is not mentally healthy. Uh, when I look at it, it it's actually quite toxic. After someone goes through the process of deconstruction, they oftentimes find themselves in this very question. Shall I stay and try to change what is going on here or shall I leave and start over somewhere? Obviously, that is not an easy question and obviously that question comes with a lot of consequences. Leaving and starting over, especially when you don't know how to read or write, and you've been totally disempowered your entire life, much like these women, leaving is a really hard thing to do. But sometimes it's our only option um, in order to honor ourselves, especially after we have deconstructed and really looked at some of the religious traditions that we no longer think are healthy for us. And sometimes people will find themselves maybe posed with the same question with the very same group. Some people might leave and decide that that's what's right for them. And some people might say, we've got to stay, we've got to change this, we have got to totally reimagine what this group can be like and that's only going to be possible if we stay and make those changes. Both are honorable, both are reasonable outcomes and in this film you watch people, you watch women go through the process of deconstruction and deciding what they are going to do when they're starting to talk about all of these faith tenets so in this film, you're watching a lot of women sit around and decide what shall we do now that we are starting to deconstruct the very religious beliefs that have kept us in these abusive cycles. This is common. It's a sign that religious trauma has been there. And it's also a sign that healing is on its way. 
The second thing that I noticed that really had a lot to do with the religious trauma that was going on in this group is when at the beginning of the film, the women are starting to have the conversation, shall we go? Shall we stay and change things? And you notice that one of the women says, the boys have become great learners around how to treat women, how they should interact with us, and what exactly their role is in the world. That they have looked around them and without actually having a school lesson on how how to treat uh, women, they have been taught how to do so. By the end of the film, you also see the women come around and say, we have been great learners too. We have been great students of taking this sort of treatment and learning what space we get to have in this world. And it was to our horrible detriment, right? This is a process that happens a lot in religious trauma. When groups become really toxic and really unhealthy, oftentimes when you start to deconstruct and pull all of those pieces apart, you start to realize that there are such normalized ways in which men and women have been forced to live that they just sort of accept this as what God wants for them, which of course keeps oppressed people oppressed and it keeps the people in power in power. And those people in power become more and more abusive over time because it goes unchecked. They get to do whatever in the world they want to do and there is no force that's coming along and forcing them to change, look at their behaviors and maybe have a new uh, understanding of what they want to do moving forward. And the third thing that showed up in the film Women Talking was the legacy of religious trauma. This did not just happen one time to one woman with one abuser. This was a legacy that was moving through generations of this religious group where there is certainly an oppressed group and there is certainly a group that's in power and that has left a trail of destruction in its path. And that is what we call a legacy of religious trauma, which means when someone is currently being abused, they look back over the history of the group and they think, well, this has been going on for so long. Um, God or a deity has allowed this to happen. So this must be what I am supposed to experience in this group. There must be some spiritual or moral meaning to why I'm going through this. This is when religious trauma gets really dangerous because when you have a legacy of religious trauma and certain groups just expect to be mistreated and oppressed and the rights taken away all the time, then you don't necessarily have to teach the new generation to follow suit. They just look around them and observe that that is what's going on and they follow suit. And it becomes much harder to challenge these things when they've been going on for a really long time. So when there's a legacy of religious trauma, it really becomes important to start to deconstruct that process, deconstruct what's going on that influences the behaviors of the powerful people in the group and really start to understand how long that's been going on and how it's taught an entire group of people how to function in a really abusive way. Okay, earlier I mentioned that I was going to teach you two ways that you could spot religious trauma. The first is going to be, can people leave or are people forced to stay in the group for some eternal future? We see this a ton in traumatic religious groups where they say, if you leave, you lose your salvation. If you leave, you will never have access to your family, both here on earth and in the celestial kingdom or in heaven or in whatever eternal future that they suggest is going to happen. This can obviously be very coercive in keeping people inside groups that are super toxic because we believe that we can face whatever is going on in our current life as long as our future is not separated from our family, separated from God in some sort of abusive hell right? This really keeps people in groups and trying not to pay attention to how terrible they are being treated because they have to be able to survive this in order to have that eternal future. So that's sign number one. If you can't leave your group because you might lose salvation, that group is a toxic group. The second sign of religious trauma that I want you to be able to spot from a mile away is what does that group do when signs of abuse are outed? 
what happens? Do they respond in horror, which would be the appropriate response? Oh my God, how has this happened? What do we need to do to protect people? What do we need to do to change? Or do they respond by blaming the victim? Unfortunately, in really toxic groups, they're going to typically blame the victim. What were you wearing? This is Satan after you? This is all kinds. They'll, they'll come up with all kinds of ways to explain that away. But really the appropriate response to anyone disclosing any sort of abuse would be horror. So that's a good sign. I want you to look out for what happens in your group when any sort of mistreatment is disclosed. If horror is not a part of it, then they're not responding appropriately. I've got a few other ideas of how religious trauma shows up in the film Women Talking, and I will be releasing those in future videos right here on this channel. Subscribe and come back and see how else we are changing the game of religious trauma. We are outing abusive dynamics, and we are empowering you to see this stuff coming from a mile away.